Today we're going to check out these PCI graphics cards. We're going to do some benchmarks and see how they run on my Windows 95 machine in MS-DOS mode. I'm currently using the Sing Labs ET6000 and I'd like to see if any of these other cards can replace it. But first, let's take a closer look at each card and the computer and software that we're going to use to benchmark them. So we've got three ATI cards to test. They're all the Mach 64 chipset which isn't that great for 3D and I don't expect these to do very well at all. Two of them I believe are exactly the same so we're going to be identifying them as one and two. They're both the CT version and both currently have one megabyte of RAM and are upgradable to two if we had the chips. This one is a GX and it has two megabytes of RAM. And we've got one Trident card to test. It's the ProVidia 9685. I believe this one has two megabytes normally, and this one has the expansion board on it. It takes it up to four megabytes. And we've got five S3 cards to test. Up at the top, we've got two Diamond Stealth 64s. Both are base two megabytes and are expandable up to four megabytes. This one has the expansion board, so it's got the full four megabytes. The one on the left is using the Vision 964 chipset, and the one on the right is using the Vision 968 chipset. Down here we have the S3 Trio 64. It was S3's first fully integrated chip, and this particular example has the extra RAM chips that bring it up to 4 megabytes. On the left we have a Diamond Stealth 3D 2000 with the S3 Verge chipset, and it's got the full 4 megabytes of RAM. And over on the right, we have a Diamond Stealth 3D 3000 with the S3 Verge VX chipset, and it's also got the memory module to bring it up to 4 megabytes. Lastly, we have the Sing Labs ET6000. It's one of Sing Labs' last cards. It currently has 2 megabytes of RAM and has some empty sockets that we can put another 2 megabytes in for a total of 4. Here's the machine we're going to be doing the testing on. Inside we've got an 8-bit PX5 with a Socket 7 Pentium MMX CPU running at 200 megahertz with 512k of cache and uh, 64 megabytes of RAM and we're going to be using MS-DOS 7.1 So we're going to be using Phil's Computer Lab's DOS benchmark pack If you haven't heard of Phil's Computer Lab and you somehow found my channel I'll link to his in the description below, you should check it out and I'm also going to link to his website where you can download this benchmark pack. So the first one that we're going to use is number two. This is 3D Bench 1.0C, so it's for PCs that are a little bit faster. And we're going to use number four, the higher resolution version of Chris's 3D benchmark. So that gives us a score and a frames per second. We'll be using the frames per second. And then we're going to use both versions of the PC Player benchmark. Which is the first one. It runs it. 320 by 200 resolution and looks like we got a 53.2 there and the higher resolution version So we got a 22.2 .2 on that one. 
Then we're going to use the higher resolution version of Doom. And this one gives us a real ticks output, and we can do some math and get the frames per second with that number. Then we're going to use Quake at 320 by 200 resolution. So there we got 48.1 FPS. And lastly, we're going to do the Quake demo at 360 by 480 resolution. And looks like we got 21.1 frames per second on that one. Now all I need to do is test the rest of the cards. The card we just tested is the ET6000. It's what I've currently got in the computer. And let's see if any of these other cards can beat it. I've got all the tests done now, so let's go ahead and look at the results. For 3D Bench, we've got the ET6000 in first with the Trio 64 right behind it. For Chris's 3D Benchmark, the ET6000 is out ahead again but the Trident actually comes in second, and the Trio 64 in third. For Doom, we've got the ET6000 out ahead again, but a three-way tie, actually, between three of the S3 cards here, the Trio 64, the Verge, and the Verge VX. In the lower resolution PC player benchmark, the ET6000 is out ahead again, with the S3 Verge in second, followed closely behind the S3 Trio, for the higher resolution PC player benchmark, the ET6000 is out ahead again, but this time the Trident actually gets second by quite a bit. In 320 by 200 Quake, the ET6000 is out ahead again, followed closely by the Trio. And in 480 by 360 Quake, the ET6000 is in first again, and again followed by the Trio 64. Well, after looking over all the results, it seems that it would be best to just leave my Sing Labs ET6000 in it. The S3 Trio on the top, though, seems like it's a pretty good card also. I think I'm going to have to spend some money and get the extra RAM chips and bring this card up to a full 4 megabytes. Well, thanks for watching, everybody.